Hi, welcome to Clitterly Speaking, the podcast. I'm Michelle Doherty. And I'm Emily Lane. We are BFFs dedicated to bringing you conversations between girlfriends over a bottle of wine. Oh, I am so excited about the wine part. Oh, me too. So pull up a chair, grab your glass, and let's get talking. Hey, 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 Emily, how are you today? <laughs> hey, 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 Michelle. I'm, I'm pretty darn good. I could like just play that piece every time because you're very good every time, which is, I'm glad I'm about not a good that. Tre- I'm trending on the very good side, <laughs> which is awesome, you yeah. know, but yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, I, I know that we're releasing this episode a little bit after, you know, our New Year's, but, you know, I feel very excited about, um, you know, what this year has to come, especially yeah. knowing yeah. that, you know, we left 2020 behind. We have, we yeah. have. What, a, what a, disastrous <laughs> experience and uh mm-hmm. you know we're fortunate we had a, we had a relatively unscathed mm-hmm. 2020 yeah unlike other listeners and people out there so we're not trying to minimize it no all. no no, no. Is gone. absolutely and you know so try to celebrate what you can of the good and the transition that's happening as a result of yes. some of those problems yes, but yes. no i'm feeling very optimistic and uh of course happy to be back here with you mm-hmm. and oh my goodness how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah, no, no, nothing really to complain about. Getting yeah. seeing the doctor for my ear tomorrow. So by mm. the time this episode releases, uh, hopefully my ear infection will be gone, <laughs> and you'll actually be able to hear me because I'm like sitting on the side of your ear. That doesn't work, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's all right. We'll be good. But yeah, yeah I, I'm. Life is good. Um, everyone's healthy, and I'm glad to be in 2021. I'm glad we've got uh, season six is rocking and rolling. I and, know. Uh, I know. I'm. I feel feel so oh my gosh I just feel so blessed that yeah. here we are yeah. season six and you know our community still continues to grow and I mean there's just an, an endless amounts of amazing women out, women out there that we can talk with and today is no exception no exception at all oh my goodness I'm so excited about the guest that yeah. you brought in I, today I know yeah this is a friend of mine her, <laughs> Kathy Schweitzer Kathy hello. say hello to our listeners Hello, hello. <laughs> Kathy and I have known each other uh, 10 years now. We've been working on a couple initiatives at, uh, through through my work. And uh, Kathy and I were having a conversation much like, like we had a mm-hmm. conversation that launched the podcast. And I was like, I didn't know that. Oh, my God. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. <laughs> you want to be on my podcast? Yeah. <laughs> And she was like, well, what's the name of it? And when I told her, she's like, absolutely, I'm going to be on your podcast. And so we are able to have Kathy uh, join us here at the uh, studio, at the Here's Talk City Studios today. So yeah, I'm, welcome. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh, my gosh. Before we get going, though, we mm-hmm. have uh, an amazing bottle of wine we need to talk about. And we also yeah. want Kathy to give a review on what she's drinking. That's true. Yes. yes. This is very exciting. <laughs> So uh, today we were, we went to Bordeaux, you know, kind of back to my my yeah. homeland, you yeah. know. Um, we're doing a Grand Van Bordeaux. It's called Chateau Bruni. It's a 2015 Bordeaux Superior. And um, we just opened this little guy. It's and amazing. I have to tell you, uh, Superior indeed, right? I, yeah. I find um, we just opened it. So I know, like, as this episode concludes, it's going to be a totally different wine. But right out of the gate. You know, on the nose, it's it's got some earth, a little bit of funk, like mushroom, a little like almost some like dustiness on it, plum and some, you know, black cherry. Then when you taste it, some of those redder fruits come out like cherry and cranberry and it's got some acidity. You get a little oak. Um, yeah, I think it's it's quite yummy. Yeah, it's quite yummy and it's very, very smooth. Yeah. You know, it's, um, yeah. What's the price point on this? So you can find it as low as like twelve dollars, <laughs> really, and up to about twenty two, twenty three, twenty four dollars is like the typical range for this wine. So mm. I think you know, right in our sweet spot. Absolutely. You're not going to have bottle shame bringing this home. Uh, no, I'll just have you know case shame because I'll have a case of it. Right. You know, 
boy is loaded in, you know, take it down to the <laughs> cellar. There's more in the car. Mommy has more wine. I, more wine. <laughs> I might be afraid that, you know, we'll run out. So, um, excuse me. Yes, yeah, you didn't is. worry about a run on toilet paper at the beginning of COVID. You worried about a run on wine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did worry about a run on wine. Yeah. And then I finally started to replenish my stock because I was like, I have, I I have a lot of bottle shame in there and I just need to like hold on to it for a little bit longer before Mm -hmm. I start drinking it. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, yeah, like if this were a panty, if you give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm. I'm seeing, I mean, this is such a tasty wine, but I'm seeing just sort of like that classic black satin, panty that's gonna not write up not give any issues just sort of be classy and fun i like it yeah yeah that makes sense a classy fun it's a delicious classic panty yes yeah i like it yeah so kathy has decided not to partake in wine and i asked her a little bit of why and she's like because yeah because of an indiscretion when i was 16 well I had a lot of those, but that's a whole other story for a whole other day. But mm-hmm. drinking, uh, if and depending upon how old you are out there, people, if you remember Spagnata wine, <laughs> it was actually very tasty. Uh, was it I, sweet? It, it's a, it was a sangria. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, and of course, the more you drink it, the tastier it gets. Yes. So being 16 in the basement of my friend's boyfriend, um consumed about a half a gallon of the stuff so that's a lot so it was like one of those gallon of like in the oh, jug yeah, those giant jugs, yeah absolutely. yeah you know, that's when you're like stumbling up the stairs yes i'm yeah. kind of yeah so, it, you know. as opposed to stumbling down the stairs Correct. which yes. is yeah. yes um and um so of course we you know had to call my dad oh, my. for a ride <laughs> My girlfriends were in the back seat gigging, giggling hysterically um, as, as I'm trying desperately to convince my father I'm not that drunk. Right, right. So, uh, then as you course, can light a match in the vehicle yeah, really. from the fumes. You know, this guy didn't drink at all. That's what I could not figure out. Why could he not smell the alcohol? I mean... He may have just chose to overlook it. I think so. Be polite. No, it. I think it was because he honestly did not think I would lie to him that Seriously. much. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, you know, years later, I felt a little guilt. For that, uh-huh. but not much. Um, so <laughs> you got over it. Yeah, yeah, I got over it real quick. So, yeah. but that's why, unfortunately, I I cannot drink wine now. Now, interestingly enough, I do not have a problem with champagne. Oh, oh my God! I almost so, got a and bubbles. and you all remind me of my daughter. I I call her the cork master. <laughs> um, she she knows wines. She okay. absolutely knows wines, and she knows champagnes. Um, it's really rather amazing. Uh, and so she has uh, enlarged my palate for oh. a whole bunch of different uh, champagnes. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. That's great. So, so, does she okay. know the panty tasting note of a wine? Yeah, she however. probably doesn't. Not, I mean, not, not she... until she becomes a fan of the podcast. <laughs> I, I, perhaps. I do not yeah. Know. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so you had that incident when you were 16. I did. And then you're, you're physically your body is repulses uh, uh, yeah, the red wine. Because I was barfing for 18 hours afterwards. Uh, so, okay, so, you know, anytime Did that, you try again? Like, oh, I have repeatedly. Okay. And it, as soon as it hits my... Yeah, <laughs> it's a rejection. It's, oh, my Lord. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it just... Ooh, uh, mm. You just ooh, shiver wow. and yeah. and yeah. And then people say trauma doesn't last. <laughs> mm. you know? Sounds like you need it, some therapy it on that one. Spinata, apparently, <laughs> so that one lasted a long, long time. So, so yes, which is you, unfortunate. You know, as a psychiatrist says, so why are you here to see us today? Well, doctor, I can't drink wine. <laughs> I need to drink. But that's wine. okay because because I can drink beer, even though I consumed a lot of that as well. Somehow, <laughs> somehow those barf ones didn't translate into I ate beer. So, so, so what beer are you drinking, I'm drinking today? I'm drinking a Corona. Okay. Um, which, Full flavored? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is the extra, not okay. the light, because okay. if you're going to drink beer, what's the point? I mean, yeah. there, you know, like light beer, really? I'm sorry to all you light beer drinkers out there, but <laughs> if you're going to drink beer, just drink regular beer. Yeah. Um, that's just a calorie choice. If you're going light, it's not because so. you're enjoying bo- pour it. Pour out half the bottle, yeah. <laughs> fill it up with water, and you have light beer. And not half the and calories. That's, you could have two bottles of light beer yeah. because you're pouring out half of it into new bottles and then filling it up with water. You know, that's kind of yeah. like the cheap way to do it. Yeah. So, so I really we're appreciate full of tips and tricks today. Oh, I know. <laughs> and what I really appreciate about Kathy's beer today is that she it actually 
came with the lime. Like she brought well, her lime, squeezed course. it. She's like she's doing it right. Yeah, and her own koozie. And koozie. her and, and own well, koozie. Yes. Because that's the other issue. If it gets warm, it's really, in any beer yeah. is just, ugh. Yeah. yeah. So almost like wine. <laughs> <laughs> just not as quickly. Just not You'll as tolerate quickly. it a little bit more. Not really. So can not you really. give us your tasting notes on this Corona? Okay. Wait. Let me try. Mm. Uh, it's piquant. <laughs> um, there's there's a lime floating around in there, um, mm -hmm. and so I taste a little bit of lime, mm -hmm. a little bit of Mexico, mm -hmm. um, and a whole lot of beach, which is where I would love to be right now. Okay, that and sounds that's, great. That's why it's sitting in my well, it's Fort Walton Beach koozie, Easy. but in fact, it really should. And I didn't bring me my Okaloosa Island uh, koozie oh. today because that's actually where I like to go. Okay. Is and that Panhandle area or where is, is that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's beautiful. Roughly speaking, Destin kind oh, of a sure. thing. But but it's yeah. not Destin. That's that's to the east mm. of that. Fort Walton Beach is to the west and you actually have to go across, you the know, bridge. a couple of bridges and Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's Well, I'm but glad you really brought the nice beach area. to us today. Yes, indeed. That's every yeah. time. I, you know, it's it's true. I watch those commercials with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> oh. You know, so I'm, you know, myself and Snoop Dogg. We're hanging out, <laughs> drinking beer on the beach. You feel very connected. I do. To Snoop when I do. you're yes. sipping your man, beer. But, you know, he likes the same beer I like, so it's So there good. you go. You'd have something to talk about. I would. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You can talk about the podcast. You know, I, introduce I would the be podcast happy. I mean, Snoop I Dog think we should have me. Snoop on. <laughs> we should. We should yeah. try to manifest that. Yeah, a B-side conversation with the <laughs> Snoop Dog. Right. So if the yeah. Corona were a panty, what kind of panty would it be? Underwear. But oh, oh gosh! <laughs> Panty was I'm in. sorry. Uh, ooh, let me see. What would it be? Oh, it would be a thong. Oh, that you Absolutely. would wear on the beach. That you would wear on the beach. <laughs> right, right. Well, and I have to, you know, because I do bring these to the beach, mm -hmm. so I have to be re very surreptitious about that because you can't have glass on the beach. So, oh, you know, yes. put it down in the insulated bag that's between the two beach chairs. And then, you know, make sure that the guys on the four <laughs> you know, away. Yeah, you know, that the beach men, you know, whatever, mm. they're, whatever they they're do. They're on those four-wheelers. Yeah, you yeah, know, they, they have like all the, we're going to save you from drowning stuff on them. Yeah, yeah. lifeguards. Yeah, they're actually them. just saving you from um, drinking out of glass. Well, you know, and, and it is very dangerous, and I'm I'm always extremely cautious about it. But, yeah. um, you know, it's just, I'm sorry, I just can't drink this out of a plastic cup. Well, silly, <laughs> qu silly question, mm -hmm. um, are you able to drive on the beach on the Gulf side? I oh, know, heavens no. no okay, Not that I'm aware. Of, yeah. No, okay. I know that they yeah. can, and some areas on the Atlantic side. Well, mm. and when my husband and I moved to Houston back in '73, um, the first thing we did uh, on Christmas Day, actually, because you know we were quote unquote Yankees, <laughs> so um, and he had a uh, he had a four wheel drive vehicle, an old Scout. And so we went driving down to the beach in Galveston. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. That was fun. Yeah, there. You know, that was fun mm -hmm. until the Texas Department of Public Safety guy mm -hmm. showed up and said, y'all are not supposed to be driving on the beach. And we're like, oh, we're so sorry. <laughs> we're from St. Louis. We didn't know. Of course, we did. We kind of figured yeah. we probably weren't supposed to, but we figured stupid would work. So <laughs> said, that's all right. Y'all have a nice time. Just don't drive on the beach. Okay. Oh, okay. Can we drive out of the beach? <laughs> oh, yes. No, he did the car. He did let us drive off the beach. So, And <laughs> then he drove down the beach. So I'm like, what's oh, up with that? I know. It's that's like, why oh, he it's wanted only... you out of the way. Yeah, it's okay yeah. for you. Not okay for me. So, yeah. Right. But that's that's all right. He's probably dead now, so we don't, you know. Oh. We don't want to speak ill of the dead. <laughs> no, my no, we God. Don't. We don't. No, we don't. Um, well, that's that's fascinating. I, uh, I've taking notes here and I have all these things now about um, about Kathy so uh, one of the things that Kathy and I were talking about that I thought would be a really great conversation mm. for us to have here on the podcast was this um, well there's two things one you ran for office a couple times mm -hmm. and you know we I just had indeed. a local local role yes okay. uh, well one of them was a state legislature okay uh, and the other one was st. Louis County Council so okay mm -hmm. and you know we've just had a huge shift, thankfully, from our, um, you know, in our presidency, and we've got all these things happening, and I thought maybe it would be a good idea just, like, maybe touch on it for a little bit about that experience of running, because we might have some listeners that are thinking about, you know, I, or being, you know, pulled to maybe run for office uh, because they want to continue to see change happen and not uh, fall back into um, the same old, same old. And I know that your experience is different from what today, but still, it's an experience of running for office. So, what what was it that that you like woke up one day and said, 
I think I want to run for state rep. <laughs> or I think I want to run for county council. <laughs> Were you drinking again? Yeah, Was it the no. corona? Yeah, yeah, no. No, no, it wasn't actually. Um, I actually, <laughs> I had, um, I was actually being recruited to run uh, for um, not the party I ultimately ran in. Oh, interesting. Mm. Um, and <clears throat> and so I was invited to one of their, um, um, you know, they have township yeah. uh, things, Democratic townships or Republican township uh, groups. And so I was invited to one, you know, and I had not been to one because I have always considered myself to be independent politically. Um, and I still do. Uh, but, but, um, so I, I go to this thing and there was the elected state rep, uh, at this and, uh, this guy, you know, nice young guy. I didn't, I didn't have a negative opinion of him necessarily. Uh, I still don't. Uh, but it was, so he's sitting there kind of, you know, making these rather conservative, um, uh, talking points and virtually everybody in the room. Uh, well, A, it was, it was very, uh, homogeneous. <laughs> everybody was Caucasian. Everybody was mm-hmm. over the age of 50. Not everybody, yeah. but 80% mm-hmm. of them, which is fine. I'm one of those myself. So, <laughs> um, I don't, I don't have prejudice against that. Uh, but, but every last person in that room was just kind of like nodding their head. I mean, I am getting visions of, mm. you know, I'm sorry, <laughs> like eh, a little too, you know, Stafford kind of, sort of. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is a little scary uh, because I didn't hear anybody asking any questions or challenging him in any form or fashion. So I thought, okay, well, I guess I don't want to run on the Republican ticket. So um, so I thought, well, let me check the other let's side check out. Check the other side out, you know. <laughs> so I went to one of those township committee meetings and it was, you know, it was like, all these people in the room and, and all these age groups and all these ethnicities. And, and, and this may very well be sort of a problem that the Democrats have, generally speaking, is they're all going, hey, you're stupid, you're full of crap, uh, which I love. I thought that was great. You know, everybody got up and had an opportunity. They're passionate. To, very passionate yeah. and, and, you know, lots of diversity of ideas. Um, and, and so I'm like, okay, that's the group I want to hang out with. Um, so I thought, well, okay. Let's run for public office. Why not? So I ran. Um, I ran in the primary against the um, the person who actually had rather inherited the seat from mm. the previous person. Sure, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just not a real big fan of dynasties necessarily. Yeah. So I thought, why not? Uh, and the reality is, is that you don't have to have. I mean, the number of voters that will decide a state legislative race is. Usually less than two thousand. Wow, isn't is, that staggering? Yeah, it is actually. Is it's, that because people don't vote for that? N- no, not necessarily. It's it's kind of that's kind of the size of the districts. Yeah, you know, we have a lot of state representatives. <laughs> yeah, we okay. do, and and so the district sizes, the number of voters in each district are not necessarily that huge. Um, you know, so and a lot of people will go into a voting booth and they'll pick. They yeah, won't, they won't necessarily vote you know, one way or the other for each position. They won't vote for this guy or this gal at all. A lot of, yeah. So they'll skip some right. kind of a thing. So so that may explain part of it. But, I mean, so I always look at those races every time they're running, like, oh, 2,500 votes, you know, 1,800 <laughs> votes. And some in, these, in the smaller yeah. district, they're like a couple of hundred votes. Yeah, I so mean, you're like, okay, I can get 2,000 well, people. You know, right? Can, yeah, so... Um, so, so I ran and, and, uh, because I really hate fundraising, I just, oh God, I hate it. It's just, bleh. so, um, you know, I kind of self-funded mostly with some, <laughs> the infamous, Hey, you know, who wants to, that knows me and likes me. What's you you know, want to give me some money for this campaign? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and friends and family, friends and family. So, um, so, you know, we did the, the handouts, the, we call them palm cards. Um, there's some lingo for you. <laughs> uh, and um, did the same thing actually when I ran in the county council. Okay. Uh, race actually, uh, and and I spent less than eight thousand dollars on that on that race. Your campaign did. Uh huh. I okay. spent less than eight thousand wow. dollars. I got forty four percent of the vote. Wow. Not too shabby. No. Um, no. So. Um, Do you recall how much your opponent? Had I spent? don't know. I don't have know. no idea. Okay. But but um, you know she mm-hmm. the person that that won I was. Quite, you know, she was obviously 
the other party, but that's fine. And I thought you did a good job. Does that need to be disclosed? What? What? What a party is spending on their campaign? Oh yes, you file campaign yeah. uh, reports. Sure. Yeah. yeah no, the so financial you reports. Yeah. You know, which is yeah. why candidates are always like, "Oh, don't you want to give me money? Because we got a report by such and such a date, and they want to." Okay. Because, up here. Well, and, and you know that has become strong. sort of a yardstick of, yeah. I don't know what you want to call it, but but it's like well, the more money, support, a, more right? money a candidate gets, and theoretically, they're better their chances of. Right. And then they look at like where the money's coming from. Like, mm-hmm. oh my God, this guy has has eight million dollars in the bank, and it's all from like five dollars and ten dollar donations. Yeah, versus, well, that means a lot. I got eight million dollars from four people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so you would think that those eight million from five dollar people would but, turn into eight million votes. Yeah. Right. No, it does not. And not necessarily. It does not. So um and and actually meeting people and talking to people. That's fun. That's that is fun. Um, I literally only had the door slammed in my face a couple of times, mm. which I was impressed with. Everybody uh, seems to be more than willing to talk to you. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Well, not really. I mean, think about it. If somebody comes to your door and says, "Hi, I'm running for public office," I and, and, don't honestly answer my door. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't you have a ring doorbell so you can see? I do, and if I don't know them, I don't answer it. Okay. You know, well, they I, could like hold up their little palm card and you could well, see well that might make I'm a difference but still I, i'm still i'm i'm very careful about opening my door in no, the city I, that, that you know sense. um so <laughs> you know i'm well, not opposed to talking to somebody who i don't know mm-hmm. that's running like i would love to hear their viewpoint but but i'm not comfortable opening my door to a stranger yeah well, yeah. we have a we have a mayor mayor's race coming up, so you probably are going to get lots of uh, oh, information. and we know multiple candidates for <laughs> yeah, that we race, do. which we is do. so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Vote for? Um, yeah. yeah so, I know. Uh, what are the um, like if you, what would you tell somebody who's might, might be thinking of running? Like, what would you think? Like three things that you would tell them, like to keep in mind or fundraise. Yeah, um, don't be like me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I yeah, mean, fundraise. Um, absolutely run for office. Um, it's, it's an interesting experience. It really is. And, um, uh, it, it gives you an opportunity to talk to a lot of people that you might not otherwise Mm -hmm. have had the opportunity to speak with and talk to them about, you know, everybody's kind of sort of the same. I mean, you know, we all really, you know, we all want to live our lives in a peaceful manner. Yeah. Um, well, except for some folks out there, but we won't talk about them. Uh, <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. Um, you know, we want we want good things for our children. We want, yeah. you know, health and happiness for our families. I mean, you know, we yeah. want to be able to afford, you know, reasonable housing and reasonable food and... Have good schools. And have good schools. Yeah. I mean, you know, in that regard, I think it it will let people know how very similar we all are to one another. Yeah. Mm. So I, I mean, I think if you're thinking about running for office, you should. Yeah. So what are some of the, you, Michelle, you spoke of initiatives that you two had collaborated on and I'm just curious, what are some of your um, initiatives or uh, visions for a better future that you you know, that drove you to run for office? Well, actually, I had several initiatives that I had put out on my uh, campaign literature. <coughs> Excuse me. And multiples, multiple of them have been adopted. So they must have been good <laughs> hey, ideas. Hey, huh? that's great. Uh, even when I was in an office. So that was yeah. pretty cool. Uh, trash districts was one of them. So, okay. so I lead this very Sibylesque life because... I couldn't decide what I wanted to do when I grow up, mm-hmm. so I just do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and so I'm I'm the uh, president of my homeowners association. I've been doing that for 20, <laughs> 20 years. So lack of commitment is not a problem for you? I guess not. <laughs> well, my problem is people go, hey, how'd you like to do this? And I go, oh, that sounds like fun. And then, you know. You're just yeah. in it, you're in it just, for the, the long haul. Yeah. So uh, so we, uh, living in unincorporated St. Louis County, we do not have a municipality that takes care of things. I mean, St. Louis County is our municipality. We pay for our own street lighting. 
Uh, St. Louis County does take care of the streets and the sidewalks, although <coughs> somewhat minimally <coughs> these days because there is never enough money. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, they snow plow and everybody is just thrilled, quite frankly, with the snow plowing. I mean, uh-huh. they do a heck of a job. Well, we don't get all that much snow. Well, That's we true, but to. when we do, yeah. let yeah. me tell you, yeah. my subdivision is pretty hilly. So, yeah, yeah you, you like, whew, there's a ski yeah. slope kind of thing going on there. So, uh, but, but, so we were all individually paying for our own trash hauling. Uh, and I had attempted to get uh, all of the trash companies, all the solid waste haulers, to negotiate. I'm like, okay, so we've got 558 houses here. What can we do in terms of a standard sort of a, you know, if we get everybody to sign up, right? what will you charge? And so we got almost the same rate that St. Louis County negotiated uh, in terms of the solid waste pickup. Uh, but <laughs> the inevitably they said, well, you know, we would, we still have to charge a $3 per household billing fee. Who did? All the haulers. The haulers? Yeah. And I said, that's ludicrous. It does not cost you $3 to generate and send a bill. Give me a break. So, okay, never mind. Uh, but but the trash districts were adopted by St. Louis County, and they negotiate yeah. the trash hauling contracts, the trash and recycling, and recycling is included. So uh, so that, that kind of came to fruition. So I was really excited about that one. Mm-hmm. So for any of our listeners that are not in St. Louis, uh, just a real quick history, St. Louis City and St. Louis County are separate from each other. St. Louis City is an independent city, so it operates as a city and a county. So uh, those services like the trash pickup, the snow plowing, mm-hmm. tree trimming, lights, that all is provided for the for those that live in the city, by the city. Um, But there are areas in St. Louis Mm. County, when St. Louis County has 88 municipalities um, or towns, and uh, there are areas that are not incorporated, like where Kathy lived. And so it was up to the individual subdivisions to figure out if, if they, they could. <laughs> if they were going to even make it subdivision. Otherwise, prior to that, it was individually. If you have 588 people, you got 588 trucks coming on. You, wow. you could certainly have. I mean, yes. like, correct. You know, yes. In air quotes. Right, yeah. right, right. So, yeah. And that was what was what was going on was we had all of, you know, hmm. three or four different haulers cruising through the subdivision, that, all, you know, every day of the week, which then wears on the uh, roads. Right. That you're um, responsible for because you're, you're a subdivision. You're a taxpayer. <laughs> well, no, we don't, we don't repave the roads. Oh, county okay. That. The but county still, does that. But there I mean, are some subdivisions that, you know, you know, as a taxpayer, it goes to You know, yeah. I pay for uh, a street light. That's crazy. Yeah. I still think that's crazy that yeah. you're paying for you a street light. You pay for a street light. Yeah. The street light, right. Like, so I have, a, I have street lights on two sides of my house, mm-hmm. and then there's another one, like, on the corner that's to the back side of the alley, oh. and I have to pay for that one. That's because that's a dusk to dawn light. That's not a street light. What? Oh, she's gone. No, I'm still not good. sure I understand why that's yeah, not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you're paying for one of those, this yeah. is my understanding of the way it works. Uh-huh. So you can obtain, so it's like around the back near the alley. Yes. Okay. So somebody at some point in time yeah. said to Amarin, Amarin, yeah, I would like to have a dusk to dawn light back there because it's incredibly dark. And they it's said, in sure, not alley. a problem. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Sure. But, but, you know, so somebody, a homeowner, mm. whoever it was that owned the house before you, presumably, Said to Amron, I'd like to have a dusk dawn light. So, I mean, it looks like a street light. It looks just like a street sure, light. Sure, because it's it's the arc light comes thingy. on when the, yep. the everyone, all the other lights right. come on. Right. It helps yep. to like light the pathway to the trash, to the you know mm-hmm. all that stuff. You know, right. so how much does it cost you a month? If you don't mind me, if I, I don't it, know. I don't know. I have it's, to look on your bill. Not, I mean, it's. Oh. I don't know, 25 bucks or something That's like awesome. that. Yeah, that adds up after it a does, year. It does. You know, so it's especially not yeah. insignificant, right? Well, you so, noticed it. It was like, right. What? Yeah, you're like, wait a minute, yeah. what's this? Yeah. What am I paying for? Exactly. <laughs> wait a minute. That was I not thought disclosed all this on my, when I bought this house, <laughs> right. that was not disclosed. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, well, that's, oh, we're learning all kinds of stuff here. No. So that's my assumption anyway. I, I could be incorrect, but otherwise I have yeah. no understanding as to why you would be do you live in a municipality she lives in the city mm-hmm. oh okay well, yeah then then that is the most yeah. likely scenario it's it's a, considered a dusk to dawn light you could call Amron and ask them yeah i'm sure they would be happy to tell you might be able to cut the service to it say i'm sorry i don't want this anymore oh i do want it 
Oh, okay. Well, then I don't mean, complain. It's kind of a, but it's just kind of a, so Eli's like, wait a minute. Here. I would find out if anybody, the other uh, residents nearby, if they're paying for it too. Cause I mean, we what should be sharing not it. Not usually. Yeah. yeah. Not usually. It's just usually the homeowner yeah. that, that yeah. requested it. Although you could cut it off unless they're willing to kick in for it. Mm. That's mm. a great way to meet your or neighbors. Or suggest. <laughs> Right, exactly. Or, I'm like, or, oh. you know, the, the carrot versus ask the for, stick. Ask for a bottle of yeah. wine every month. Yeah, you could say, isn't this mm. a marvelous thing? Did you realize I'm paying for this in its entirety? Mm. They might go, oh, I had no idea. That's a good point. What an unfair burden. <laughs> yeah, Andre, just we give me some happy. wine. Just we give me some happy. wine, well, chocolates. And so in my subdivision, because yeah. it was created like in 1969, mm. and we have 22 cul-de-sacs, and there are these gas lights. Well, there were oh, gas yeah. lights until the gas crisis and whatever, 1970, whatever. Uh, and so, and so they apparently actually literally ran the gas line to one of the houses on each cul-de-sac. And so that house was then paying. For oh my that gosh. Lights. Uh-huh. You have a giving house. <laughs> well, no, because the subdivision would pay, you know, they'd, they'd give that household a couple bucks a month or whatever uh-huh. it was extra on their gas bill, which yeah. I thought was. But that was an on your honor system, I imagine. Well, I mean, I think the, you know, they, they calculate how much it costs to run one of those a month. Okay. So, huh. yeah, I don't think they were hmm. going to, you know, pony up like, so, hey, my 30 question, bucks this month. question too. is now, <laughs> right. hey, those hey. lights have been switched mm-hmm. to electric lights. No, they have not, actually. Most of them were removed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Did the, uh, those, I wonder if those homeowners saw their bill go down, because sometimes the bill just stays the same. Yeah, well, where's the gas going? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> the bill is the same. Ooh. Where is that gas going? Yeah. <laughs> mm. The stuff you find out, yeah. you learn about as a homeowner or you know a resident. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, re- a resident yeah. of your city. Right. Your yeah. City. And you're like really? Yeah. Okay. Is so this wine, I'm just going to have to like pop in here with a new note because it's evolving. There's some on the palate, some licorice and vanilla. Well, I don't know if I taste mm. that yet. Because mm-hmm. because Dusty was kind of scaring me a little bit. Oh, there. I like it. it Dusty, Dusty makes me think okay. of like the wine cellar in which it's like hanging okay. out and doing its thing. You know, it's like okay. stored in a cave. Right. And makes me feel like I can see where it came from. <laughs> so the Dusty never bothers me. It's okay. usually a sign of earth. Ah, okay. Yeah. Because you were talking dust and mushrooms. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. I love a mushroomy wine. I... I can't, I can't taste it, so I, I, I would be like, it tastes really, really, really good, and I, I can drink it very fast, and oh uh, fortunately, I won't be throwing it up later, so. Yeah. Uh, um, but, so, yeah. Yeah, so, Kathy, one of the things that when Michelle was telling me about you, mm-hmm. you know, she had mentioned that you've you've done some great things with, you know, helping to improve like economic situations for those in less privileged areas and things like that. And I'd love to explore that a little bit because impressive and uh, (laughs) I'd love to learn a little bit about where some of those initiatives came from and like the the impact of them today. So Michelle, with you having a little more insight on that. Sure, sure. We were talking, uh, Kathy was sharing like you said, you've done a variety of things in your life, right? Yes. As well as being a radio DJ for five years, right? Yes, oh, indeed. Wow. I can tell she's got the radio voice. She has, yeah, definitely. Yeah. She's going to stop for a commercial break soon. <laughs> <laughs> but Get out your Corona. <laughs> Tasty, cool, um, delicious Tasty. Corona. It's like it's wearing a little thong all by itself. That's what Snoop Dogg it and makes I you, recommend. Oh, my makes God. Makes you want to wear a thong all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very skinny legs. But you might be able to overlook it you yeah. know, if you're having a beer with him. Yeah. Uh, however, we were we, we got on this conversation about the credit union that you mm-hmm. were involved in creating. And so I think that's a fascinating story. And I, and, <laughs> and I think we should share that with our, our listeners and, and, of course, with Emily as well about how you why you started it, how you started well, it. Okay, so A, I didn't, I did not specifically start it. Like, as I said okay. earlier, it's one of those, oh, that sounds like fun kind of a things. That um, would never, by the way, for the record, like <laughs> starting a credit union is not on my top 100 list of that sounds fun. Sure. <laughs> because you get to learn things. Yeah. So, so no, actually the gentleman, the, the genesis of the idea actually came from a guy by the name of Phil Minden. Okay. Brilliant guy. 
Uh, he actually was with county planning um, for quite a while. And so in that role, um, and then he also is, you know, he serves on a bunch of boards and stuff. And anyway, one of the things that he realized was that <clears throat> with a lot of the nonprofit housing corporations – that he would have, you know, reason to deal with as part of planning um, or community development. I'm sorry, not planning, uh, although I think they're one and the same now. Um, so a lot of the folks that were clients of these, house, you know, housing-oriented corporations right, right. Um, were, were, were paying their mortgages. Um, and, and I used to work for Habitat for Humanity because I started the Habitat Restores. But anyway, so... So they would, like, pay their mortgages with with uh, money orders because they did not have a bank. Uh, and so Phil said, hmm, and he investigated the possibility of starting a credit union. So, uh, so, <laughs> so sent out a survey, you know, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And then one of the questions was, would you be willing to serve on the board of the, you know, credit union? So I'm like, sure, sounds like fun. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so it was two years worth of back and forth, back and forth, getting uh, the charter, uh, and we did a federal charter uh, a- at the time because it was so. The history of credit unions, really briefly, is that they were all workplace uh, mm-hmm. alternative to banking, right? And and if you you know have been around a while, you remember like teachers' credit union, yeah. and postal workers' credit union, yeah. and telephone workers' credit sure. union. And even like Ralston Purina or Anheuser Busch, so they're all workplace uh, uh, financial institutions. And uh, as time has gone by, and those employers have shed employees, uh-huh. then the membership of those credit unions were were shrinking. dwindling. Yeah, they were dwindling. And so, uh, long story short, uh, that most of those have have gone from being what is called a SEG credit union. That's Select Employer Group. That's what that mm. stands for. Uh, to being a community charter. I don't know, probably like, I don't know, in the late 80s, early 90s, sure. you drive down the street, there'd be these big banners. If you live or work yeah. in these oh, yeah. sure. you can belong to the credit union. Yeah. I thought, that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Why would you need to leave, live in this zip code? So, But it has to do with the community charter and the way it's chartered. And so so credit unions were, were merging. They were not emerging. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. and, and so... Uh, our our person at the um, what was called the League, uh, Missouri Credit Union Association, suggested that a federal charter uh, would be much easier to obtain. That the regulators wouldn't look askew of it. Oh, and you know, all the rest of these guys are all emerging. What are you trying to do? Yeah. Uh, and so, but it was still a two year slog to get the charter. Uh, and we were actually, I think we were the first federally chartered credit union in like 20 years or something. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when was that established? Uh, 2005, 2005, I think was when we got the charter. I'd have That's to... interesting. And yeah. so let's go back to the fact that the, the population was using money orders mm-hmm. to pay for their mortgages. Let's right. talk about what that is what that means. I mean, right. you, they this, were they were either unbanked or underbanked, and that's you know those phrases have been kind of tossed around. But yeah. uh, the reality is is that there are a lot of people who do not trust uh, financial institutions, generally speaking. Is it that they don't trust them, or they're not like worthy of? No, it, finan- well, you know it, what I mean. No, a lot is of people don't trust them. Issue? A lot of them yeah. don't trust. You know, yeah. they, okay. They want to be able to touch their money. Right. Okay. okay. It's right here. They're under storing my it in the mattress in their home. Exactly. Yeah. Um, or you know, a lot of them in the bra, whatever. Wow. Um, so. <laughs> hey, I've carried but, my money in the bra. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm, not all of your money. Like maybe the money <laughs> for a night. Girl, you know? I, girl, there's not enough room in this bra for all my money. You know, I'm sitting on mounds and mounds of cash these days. <laughs> It's all wrapped up in my wine. Yes, I do. It's the wine in my bra. <laughs> so, so these because these folks were using money orders and things, uh, and and uh, so so the idea was that in fact that this would be a low income designated community development credit union because people who are unbanked are unbanked for a variety of reasons. One of which is a lot of people don't trust financial institutions, um, and the other thing is. And this was something that I kind of blew me away when I found this out was 
uh, if you have had, uh, you know, overdraft charges or something yeah. of that nature oh uh, on your on on a bank account yeah. uh, that that you cannot get even a savings account. No way. Yes way. And I was like, what? That's stupid. I mean, like unpaid overdraft yes. fees. Like, yeah. So you had yes, an account at there are, XYZ because, Bank because financial institutions will discover that. Well, and I tell you what, they that process can be very predatory, as we have found with like credit cards and mm-hmm. late, like, oh, you didn't pay your bill by five p.m. Eastern time, you're now like late. Uh, like the way that stuff about accrues. Credit cards. Let's talk. We can talk about some credit cards. Yeah. How about the the um, here? Give us your five hundred dollars, and we'll give you a five hundred dollar line of credit credit card. Oh, but the prepaid the cards. The first thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. But the first thing that happens is uh, six ninety five oh, fee. Bingo. And then you know the person who has the card. Of course, you know people don't read things, yeah. or if they read them and they don't understand them, they typically will not make mention of that and the person who's trying to get them to buy this thing usually will not say anything to them yeah. by the way if you have any questions ask me uh and so what happens is they they you know they give some some card a five hundred dollars here have five hundred dollars in cash and then that card charges them yeah. 195 dollars for the card and uh. of course they're running around and they're yeah. charging you know but they so they don't have five hundred dollars anymore they really have you know Right. Three hundred and five dollars. It's and, very predatory. Oh yeah. You and know. Then, and then so what happens is the very first bill they get, they're already behind. They're already Way well, behind. they're magically over their credit limit. Isn't that handy? Yeah. And so blammo, their first bill has a thirty five dollar over credit limit fee. Yeah. Yeah. And then the twenty percent interest rate and all that other oh, stuff. Oh, twenty seven, right? twenty eight, thirty two, yeah. thirty five. And, yeah. And what you were mentioning with like whoever's setting them up on that credit card, they're not telling them about the parameters of, of it because they're on a quota to sign up X amount of people per month on their credit card, you know. Which then leads lends to, again, more distrust of, of right. financial institutions. Right. Absolutely. And so if you are unbanked or underbanked, it costs you more to do business. Oh, yes. Than somebody who has... It's expensive to be poor. It is it very is. expensive. Isn't very expensive. that a yes. line? Oh my lord! Yes. You're right. It is. It is because there's a like there's a cost to get a money order. Yep. So if your mortgage was a thousand dollars, you have to pay what maybe eleven hundred dollars. I don't know what the the rate is at the money order um, to get a money order. Well, they order. vary widely. Yeah, <laughs> depending on the amount, things yeah. like that. Um, you know, you're not earning any interest on your money, so there's you're <laughs> like you're losing an opportunity to have your money work for you. Um, it's h- harder to get things done. Yes, it is. And I, and even yeah. t- when we went into this COVID lockdown and like, um, please don't use cash because yeah. of money. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, like what are the, oh, right. I only operate in cash. Right. Absolutely. What happens to them? Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I, I was, uh, kind of blown away at the, at the concept. And I think that's so, so cool that. That there are solutions. There are, there are there are solutions to help, and as education along with it, right? Um, so you worked for two years to get the charter going in two thousand and five, and then we got the charter, and then we opened. <laughs> hey, so, you guys want to hey. come give us your money? Oh yeah, and we're not well, going to steal it from you. Yeah, promise. Well, <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting because it's like I always tell my members, I'm like, okay, so we are exactly. Like Bailey Brothers building. I was, when you were talking about this. exactly what it is. 100%. Absolutely. I was going to chime in. I'm like, oh my Absolutely. God, you're like Bailey yeah. Brothers. Absolutely. Because it's oh. like, you know, when you belong to a credit union, and this is true for every credit union, um, you, all of the members own the credit union. I mean, that's why, you're, that's why your savings accounts are called shares. Because you literally own a portion of that credit yeah, union. Yeah, that's awesome. And here's the other thing. Every credit union out there has annual meetings. Mm. They're not you depending. They might not necessarily be all that advertised. I mean, yes, you'll get some quicky little <laughs> something somewhere. Maybe. Email. They'll, they'll yeah. do what's legally yeah. required yeah, for notification. Much. Um yeah. So um so if you have an account in a credit union, pay attention. Or you can inquire when is the next annual meeting because by law you are uh, sure. Okay, can I ask you a little bit? So, talking about um, skepticism with your financial institution, I can understand certainly like an older generation who had like, you know, depression callbacks 
Like, I can see that being scary. Um, we haven't had a whole, you know, like, crash like 1929, um, like that, where, like, there was a run Since. on money in the banks, right? Yeah. Where, right? That's true. Um, but, you know, I understand how, like, generationally, generationally how that that trickles down. I'm just curious now in today's world, um, one, you know, uh, it'd be interesting to kind of explore a little bit about maybe what caused some of that unrest in a younger generation. Does it come in the younger generation? And um, the other thought I'm having is I'm totally losing it. So I don't remember. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the, it's the it's mushroom portion of the line. The dustiness. Yeah. The dustiness. It is. It's <laughs> dusting my line. Um, <laughs> no, I, it, it's, uh, well, well, let's explore well, that think, and then I'll come back. I'm going to throw a thought out there. I, I think even when, like before women could have bank accounts that were just their own, you know. Or they could have credit in their own name. Right. When, you right. know, like, like their husbands could just go like, you know, deplete their account if, mm-hmm. and, and without oh, telling them. That's it. <laughs> when you said husbands deplete account. It, like you remember. That, like, it yeah, totally perfect. did. Because I'm curious if credit unions, do they have the same rules and regulations that of uh, another, like a bank would have? Because I was a part of a credit union, and I did have a husband take all the money and run. So there you go. Okay. Uh, uh. So just so you know, uh, credit unions are, by and large, we credit unions are insured by the NCUA, which is the National Credit Union Association, which is the credit union version of yeah. the FDIC. Right. Okay. Um, And so all credit unions operate under the same sets of rules. However, having said that, those are the rules. Then um, each financial institution, though, seems to have this really interesting concept about making up their own little rules for all kinds of things. Now, if you had a joint account with your husband, that's what I always tell everybody. You know, I love my husband to death. I have been married for 47 years. I have one joint account with him. The rest of the money, he's going to have to wait till I die. Okay? (laughs) So, because that's the reality. You have a joint account with anybody, whether it's your husband or your friend down the street or your mom or your kid or whoever. They own your money. And they Mm. can walk into that financial institution. You equally own it. Like, you could do the same, right? Absolutely. You You can go in there and suck it all out and so can they. So you can always do beneficiaries. You know, if you're concerned, hey, suppose I get hit by a bus while I'm crossing the street. Then just yes. name a beneficiary, do a payable on death. Um, so okay. So, so, but I am curious. So, so there are like there's room for flexibility in the rules. Well, so it depends <laughs> on what you mean by the rules. Okay, like here I'll give you an example. So I was at a credit union, and one day, not ours, uh, <laughs> and there was a lady who was in their drive-through, and she wanted to, um, uh, so she wanted to cash a check. Okay, somebody had given her a check, a friend, whatever. Somebody had given her a check, and she had sufficient money, because I heard the <laughs> I heard <laughs> overheard. She had apparently sufficient money in her account to cover this check, but they wouldn't cash the check for her. Why? You know, that was the exact same question I asked myself. What in the hell is going on? Because they decided that it was too risky for them. And so they suggested to her that she bring it to the credit union upon it was the one that person yeah, had it that was the check was written on to get it cash. The only problem with that is almost all financial institutions, if you do not have an account, an account there, they will zap you some money. Oh yep. my Cost God. you $15 to cash that check, girlfriend. And then they want your thumbprint. So um, now Venmo and all that jazz is... Well, and, and thus you have the rise of, of yeah, all of these alternative digital payments. Digital platforms. And believe me, somebody is getting paid in there as well. You know, it's like I see the commercial yeah. for Dave, and if anybody out there has been dealing with Dave, I'd like to know how this works because I'm going, how can Dave advance somebody, mm-hmm. oh, I got $75, you know, in advance of my paycheck. Somebody's getting paid somewhere. Mm-hmm. All these, all of everything that we do for our members costs us money. Yeah. You know, so there's money that all of the, you know, the networks cost money, the cards cost money. So how the hell is Dave getting paid? 
That's what I want to know. You know, I kind of tend to think, and I haven't really looked into it, but I tend to think it's because it's probably one of those, well, if if you want Dave to give you the money today, we'll be happy to do that. Oh, there's a fee. There's, there's a, a fee involved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I might have to wait three sure. days. Hey. PayPal. Bing, bing. PayPal bing, did bing. that. Same, same. Yeah, so it's there like you go. 1%. That's how Dave's getting paid. It's 1% how if you want it that, doing that it? day. I don't know. You know, like... And I, I, I'm sure there's something, something. In there. I just did my first Venmo like the other day, and because Woo-hoo! I've been, I've been scared of it. Like, well. like talk about people who don't trust. Like, you know, understanding like our phones are so compromised. I think, or have the potential to be compromised quite easily. Like, look at all these, <laughs> look at all of our social platforms, and if you read all the rules, I mean, even the app, my the the Waze app that navigates I, yeah, you I don't around. Use that. Oh, I don't either because I've read the contract, the agreement to their policies. It is terrifying. They're like, yep, we basically have access to everything. And so that is the kind of thing where I'm like, I don't, I'm kind of scared of doing banking and having access to my accounts on my phone. So Kathy's just whispered twice into the microphone that she doesn't do banking online. Well, and and here's why. Here's why. And and I don't use debit cards either. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Uh, because if you use a debit card, well, if somebody gets your debit card and they use it fraudulently, you will get the money back. The problem is, is that your financial institution is allowed like up to 60 days to investigate. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. And then your money is not available to you for 60 days. Better to use a credit card where you can dispute it. Mm, but yeah. meanwhile, you're still paying charges and interest. Well, and if you that pay off your, int- your credit card every month, you're But not. I'm curious. I mean, yeah. I'm wondering what the percentage of the people out there that do that. That do what? That pay off their cards every month. Yeah. Actually, it's a fairly large percentage, believe is it or not. Is it? Yes, it is. I, I remember reading Not this. at this table. Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's why <my>, is it? <laughs> I, I remember reading it. I can't remember what the percentage is, but it was actually much larger my than I thought. My heightened voice and question mark at the end might have given there that away. There that pay their credit cards off every month? <laughs> Holy cow. Oh my God! Well, but if you think about it, it's really kind of handy because you're using somebody else's oh, money yeah. and not paying for it. I yeah. used to. Ka-ching. That used to be my life. I did that. You know, when I had all the security going on, you know. Yeah. yeah. But in and then, you know, as as like you said, it's expensive to be poor. You know, like as my financial dynamics shifted, I it was like, oh, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I I'm, I'm like hoarding my like what I have, but then like logically, I also understand I'm paying for that. You mm-hmm. know, but still, you know, and then it just it accrues. You know, because yeah. you're you're paying for it. You know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I find that uh, as a divorced mother of three children mm-hmm. for the last eighteen years. Yeah, credit card balance has never been zero. It's never been zero. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's never. They need to eat. Yeah, you know, you they, need a trip to Sweden every okay, now and then. Yeah, that's yeah. Now that's, okay, that's, not necessi- that <laughs> that's not necessarily. That's not that's not necessarily on my credit card. I do I do plan for some things. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I just no sort shame of like, there. I mean, you know, you yeah. need your your I, inspiration yeah. time yeah. for sure. But um, but it is it does it does cost to be poor because you can't and um, you know. Not only are you not banked, but if you don't have the money to put gas in the car to get to your job right. or you don't have the money to put, you know, to buy newer clothes, to wear to a job interview, to get a better job. I mean, it's just sort it's of like you get terrible cycle. You get a, a cycle pigeon of poverty. Oh, yeah. 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 So 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 we did this uh, credit union and the, the purpose of it was largely to uh, offer um, financial services at market rates to to people that were not only unbanked but who have less than stellar credit scores uh, and and um, because that's the other issue. You know, if your credit score is not real great, then guess what? You're paying a whole lot more in interest. Which is yeah, crazy. I mean, it's like, it's like so, you so can't like even afford it. There were three it. or four of these, I call them second tier uh, automobile lenders yeah. running around. Uh, and and they will charge anywhere from twenty eight to thirty seven percent interest for an automobile. Oh my god! Uh, and and then that's an got- essential thing in America. It really it is. is because we don't it have is. public transportation. 
nearly yeah. as well. Th- the infrastructure you know, really right. sucks. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah, there's in your major metro areas, yeah. you've got some, but, you yeah. know, not ours, you yeah. know. So, and, so we decided to, to um, you know, do that. And the, the examiners were always, oh, you know, your, <laughs> your credit score tiers are... Like, you know, we'll give loans to people that have credit scores way below what what a lot of financial institutions would. And, of course, the examiners don't like that. So, yeah. you know, we're always trying to, like, balance um, what the examiners, you know, the perfect world of the examiners. I'm sorry, but, you know, they just sure. live in these perfect worlds where people don't They can resign. judge. Yeah. yeah. Um, where there the are no world. poor. Where, there, right. where, where nobody has a problem. Right. So I'm curious, Kathy. But you've been doing this for 15 years, so you guys have been successful. I mean, you kept it open for 15 years. Well, we... we That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, we merged. Uh, we merged, actually, with another credit union that itself was the result of a merger. Uh, and the reason we did was because they were a... a well, we're still a SEG credit union, but but they were a SEG credit union. Uh, and um, and their, their potential membership base... Um, was not going to be able to get any bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, our potential membership base is quite large, actually. Infinite. Well, not infinite, but but you know, a hundred thousand people. Yeah, uh, kind of a okay. thing because um, because of the way the credit union is, and it's so it's so it's a seg credit union, but it also incorporates um, some the clients of the nonprofits. We there okay. were eight original nonprofits that were theoretically founding this. Okay. You'll notice my air quotes mm. um, because they were ostensibly going to supplies, supply money because you got to have money to lend money. Yeah. Um, and that didn't happen. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, so, you know, over time, you know, you kind of get some people depositing money and, and so forth and so on. And again, it really is truly Bailey Brothers building a loan. Yeah, it's like, so it's not in that vault back there. You know, it's in his car and it's in his <laughs> yeah, yeah. It truly is. So it truly is. So I have two two questions. Let's talk about that. You know, you have to have money to lend money. Mm-hmm. So where did the money come from to start it to say we've got something to work with? And then I'm curious to also then dive into you, you know, what has been the impact to that community? By by this community of people who have been underbanked in this underserved area, you know, have you seen a turnaround financially for those sure. in your community? Yes, so let's talk cool. about that yeah. a bit. Well, and, and because we are a SEG credit union, so the name of the credit union is UBC Credit Union. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, you uh, say now that like taking you've heard members of from uh, all around the well, St. Louis actually, region. Well, actually, you can go on our this website. This episode brought to you by... No, just you kidding. You can go on our website and see the 22 entities oh. um, which would qualify you for membership okay. in our credit union. Um, you can be an employee... Uh, an annuitant, um, if or you could be a family member of a member, that's actually one of the coolest things about credit union membership is that if, like, you know, your mom is a credit union member, then all of her children and her husband yeah. uh, are eligible for, and her parents. Is that are typical eligible. of a credit union process? Well, again, there's two kinds of charters there's a community charter and there's okay. the, the SEG charter. And so with the SEG charter, it's not like, hey, I live in the neighborhood necessarily, yeah. kind of a thing, um, or in the St. Louis area, so to speak. Um, it's it is I I I can belong because somebody that can belong belongs, and I belong to them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like this octopus thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the plan. So let's talk about the impact and how things have changed. Well, um, we have had a um, fair number of our members. So one of the one of the and I hate to call them products, but that's what they are. One of the kinds of loans that that we do, we do actually an amazing variety of loans. Uh, but one of the loans that we do, um, two of them actually, one's one's called a um, stretch pay loan, and it is a payday alternative loan. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is a maximum loan, two hundred and fifty bucks. Um, it's if you're our member and you have been our member and you've been an active member. Um, for I think it's two months, three months, um, we'll give you the loan. We will run a credit report, but we don't 
I don't want to say we don't care what it says, uh, but we will run a loan uh, credit report mm-hmm. because, A, one of the things that we always like to do is to talk to our members about what's on a credit report because there are very often things on people's credit reports they and don't have even no know about business it. being there. Oh, my gosh. I've been there. You know, I've had the, like— you, you know, you've got a D on here for some medical bill. Oh, yes. That's quite, You know, that was like three common. years old. I'm like, what is that? How come I don't even know about this? It was yeah. $15. Exactly. I would have made that And that dropped your score. Ago. That dropped your credit score 70 points. Yeah. Yes. I mean, definitely have run into that situation. Yeah. So, so we always try to, you know, point out things and go, so are you aware that this was here? Kind of yeah. Thing? And oftentimes they're not. Sometimes they are. Um, but, but the important thing is, is that, you know, they know about it. So we have this, it's $250 loan and it's, it's a two month payback yeah. um, because, you know, the, the, uh, <laughs> the title loans and the payday loans, right. it, those are, are, those are like, those are two week paybacks. Those and, are two week paybacks. And those are, are two months. And those are at what? 75% interest. Uh, the cheapest one I've seen is 125%. Mm. The most expensive one I have seen was 565%. Oh, my Because those God. are not regulated financial institutions. No, they're not. They're not. Oh. And, they're, and they're, as a result, they're, yes. they're legal loan sharks. Well, oh. um, some people would say that. Now, now the reality is it's a numbers game for them, okay? Yeah. And, and if they get enough people, even though they have... You know, they may have a delinquency rate that's significantly higher. And so that's what they use as justification for charging. Their rate. <laughs> 200%, oh 300%, God, whatever, whatever. Crazy. So, um, but, but, they're, but their advertisements are so po- so positive. I got my title back. From yeah. Title, right. you know. Well, yeah. I mean, they're so positive. Look at me. I got my title well, back. Absolutely. And but they don't say why. Yeah. Well, oh. they got it back because they paid the loan off. <laughs> exactly. And, and, you know, and and people tend to be very optimistic oftentimes about their ability to pay something back rapidly. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, if if you couldn't pay the rent this month because you were short, what's yeah. going to happen next month? So so oh. and 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 that's, you know, so what happens so is they renew and roll over and they yeah. pay the fees and they never pay the things off and so we so we we do a stretch pay loan. And again, okay. the purpose of it is to provide short-term emergency funding. My kid needs a filling. Uh, I have to buy a tire. Uh, you know, yeah. something where I don't have that 160, 180 bucks sitting in my checking account. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we it do that. does take like caring and relationship. Really, it does. We're that's know. absolutely how we operate. Oh, that's just fascinating, Kathy. What you are able to do for the population that you guys are serving—that's just amazing. It is. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And and we really uh, we really like our members. Cool. We well, hope our members like us. Yeah. Well, let's serve our population by giving everybody a wine break to refill their glasses, including us, and we'll be right back. Absolutely. And we're back. Oh, thanks so much for giving me some more of this fantastic Bordeaux Superior. I had a feeling you would want a little more. Yeah. Yeah, the more I put my nose down uh-huh. in this glass. I know. It's really... Oh, the more I'm going to be calling the wine merchant tomorrow and saying, load me more up, buddy. More wine, more wine. Mm-hmm. More wine, sir. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, when we got into the studio, we had a great, like, 20-minute conversation. <laughs> Every time we started going down a path, you'd be like, stop it, stop it, stop it. We need to have it for the show. Hush, hush. And, you Save know, it. It, ex- it. We went down topics of, like, from pumping our own gas to AI, to AI technology and how it's affecting jobs and just all this other stuff. So... You I wanna, think it's, you want to touch on that for for the I think for our be listeners. Kind of fun. Oh yeah. yeah. Absol- so, absolutely. I remember one of the first things you told me about Kathy is that she's you. Passionate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are this you know this, like this social advocate who's done these things for poor communities yet you refuse to pump your own gas. Oh no, I pump my own gas. Oh do you? I okay. just resent the hell out of it. Okay? <laughs> okay. No, I because that is, in my opinion, uh, the death of uh, customer service in this country started with pump your own gas. Mm. When I was a kid, and that was a really long time ago, when I was a child, you would go to a gas station and there would be you know, two a or tent. three guys, at least one, yeah. that would come out and 
get your windshield washed. Check your and they oil. Would check your oil. They would put air in your tires. I remember and that. they would pump your gas for you, okay? So sometime around, I don't know, the Arab oil embargo, I think. Some kind of those kind of they. Was see, it? You're, you're like you're looking at me with those eyeballs. Yeah, I'm, How I'm, old are you anyway? Don't you remember this? I remember. <laughs> I remember like going to remember the gas seeing station. Those old film clips no, and people ahead. pumping our gas. I'm just yes. trying to think like when was the switch? Was it like early '80s? I think it. No, I think it was earlier than that. Earlier, I think. but yeah. I do remember yes. in the early '80s it being available. Oh yes. But here's what I also remember. Is that pumping your having somebody pump your gas meant that you tipped them? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and so, okay. if Not people me. were, you know, like you know, yeah. living conservatively, if this is a do-it-yourself sure. con. I mean, people are DIY here, you know. So, I can see that. Well, I'm going to save the couple of dollars. They were not DIY then. Okay, you could get people to do things. <laughs> At a reasonable price. No yeah, reason. I remember my parents yeah. tipping the the gas yeah, the guy sure. who was pumping the gas. Yeah. No, it. the whole idea behind pump your own gas was that we were going to save money. Yeah, right. And this is what the oil company said: pump your own gas. It'll be great. Save some money because gas prices are going up. And so, so, so they all put in these pump your own gas pumps and eliminated gas station attendants. And I don't recall seeing. The gas prices go down. No. No, they did not. Similarly. Um, but the, n- nor have they. I mean, no. we've been. And they're not le- going to either. No, because okay? why would they? Inflation. Yeah, absolutely. Demand. Why? Because now we can get you to pump your own gas, girlfriend. And and I don't have to. And, right. And yeah. In that. Uh, oh, but how, wait, how there's that, more. How that price is broken <laughs> down, you know. But there's more. Wait. So there's more. Because, <laughs> because we can also get you to dial a phone number. You know, and press one, press two, press three. Never reach a human being. Right. Uh, and and answer these questions. They call it VRU, by the way. It's voice response unit. I hate. I yeah. hate those things. You, you know, you you're in there going. I said one. <laughs> so. <laughs> and I'm thinking know, I'm probably talking too fast for and, them. And they figured out that if you know, because so many people were pressing zero, zero or yeah. pound or something, so that's not the default anymore. Unfortunately, it won't get you to a human being. But but they did that because. That way, they could eliminate human beings to answer the telephone. Right. And, and I don't know any of these companies that are offering us a discount because they no longer have these people employed to, to take our phone calls. Um, so you've oh, and then and then you can go to the you can go to the grocery store, and and you can check yourself out. Yeah. Okay. And and I don't recall I that anybody's lowering any prices because I'm checking I love myself out. That though. I really do. <laughs> I I don't like self checkout. Oh. I find it to be so much more work. I like to load my stuff up on the on the conveyor belt and then push the cart through and then stand there and have everything put in my cart. I find like unloading and then going and, or scanning mm. and, well, and, and you're then, and you're look at you're standing in a smaller space. Yes, and, and you have less room to put stuff up there. Yes, you do. And then you have to like. Mm. And or you're waiting for the person who's <laughs> scrolling through all of the pictures of the produce to figure out what in the world they're uh, buying. I don't know. I, I love it. I, I actually love it. And, that, and except you know, in this COVID era, it feels a little different. I don't. I want to touch the least amount of things as possible. So that makes sense for me. With the go like down the conveyor belt with the shield and all of that feels a little safer. Where there's actual person. Yeah, that feels safer now. But pre-COVID, uh, I I love the freedom of just being like, yeah, choo, 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 in my bag. Let's go. But I'm also not buying for a family of children. Right. You know, well, who, I, I mean, my kids are, you know, practically I know, but adults you still now, have, but I'm still buying for more than one person. You're buying for, right. So, Well, like, and I wonder if, like, one of the benefits of having somebody check you out at the grocery store is when I've bought things from the deli, from the, you know, prepared foods, and they go, oh, this expired tomorrow. I mean, this expired yesterday. Seriously. I don't know if, Never I don't know if happen. like the electric thing would go. Oh yeah, right. It's going to go, oh, hey, don't buy this. Exactly. I have never had that happen. <laughs> so. Not once. On, on the, ex- on the, on no. the self-checkout? I don't it, think it n- would let me n- know. Anywhere. So, and no one has ever said, well, oh, by the way, you're buying, buying an expired yeah, product. So, oh. so it's like, you know, so the grocery checkout is another one of those, oh, let's get these idiots to do their own work and we won't lower their prices either 
Um, and and it just keeps going on and on. And it, it's very difficult. It's, it's like it's like all these companies are continually trying to get uh, new customers and they blow off their old customers. It's like, you know, oh, yeah. I can't it's tell you how many promotions I get from a variety of companies going, oh, why don't you go get us three or four customers and we'll give you 50 bucks a month. No, why don't you give me $50 a month off my bill? Because I've right. been with you for 20 years. Well, right? I've, I I totally agree with that. I found that very frustrating with multiple phone plans where it's like, you know, you mm-hmm. can't get the best deal because you've been a customer That's forever. Right. So yeah. I, I almost, eventually did I switch. I left Sprint because of that. Yeah. I, I, left, I left Verizon because of that. I was with them for, from the beginning. I was with Sprint for 20 years. Yeah, I had like the unlimited calls plan, all that stuff, yeah. and then... What what really pushed me away was when I learned that, you know, when they had said, oh, no more unlimited minutes oh, plans, God. right? No more. And then I had one friend of mine who was able to successfully negotiate the renewal of it, of it for a grandfathered program, and I was not able to, which told me it, it really is an agent-to-agent decision, mm. which is BS. Mm. Like, either you can do it or you can't. You know, so that's another job that I had. <laughs> <laughs> phone? You were in phone customer well, service? Yeah, I was phone actually. Agent. Yes, I was. I was. I worked for a large telecommunications company. Um, and um, so uh, this was like 90, 91, 92. And so what I did was, well, A, I first I did like cell phone stuff. But then after that, I did, you know, their actual telephone products, right? So people would call up and they would have problems with these devices. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they have a decision tree. So they had something they called talk time. Okay? (laughs) Yeah. 30% 30, 30 of the people in the unit I worked in were out on stress disability payments because of this talk time. And I'm going like, are you kidding me? Get out of here. You think I can do anything in three minutes on a telephone? I don't think so. So people would call. And you would have to, you know, you'd run them through. Well, what's it? Is it doing A, B, or C? Well, then you need to unplug it and let it sit for a sure. Yeah. So, so, so the program that we were supposed to be running, you have, you were supposed to get them off the phone in three minutes. In three minutes, they didn't care if you solved their issue. That was not what they wanted. Get them off the phone in three minutes. Give them some. Oh, that's poor management, right give there. Give them something to do. Uh, you know, and then tell them to call you back. And so when I was told this, I said, no, wait a minute. You mean you don't care how many times this one person has to call back because everything you've told them in this less than three minutes hasn't solved their issue. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes. Measuring the wrong metric. Oh, sorry. I don't work like that. So my talk time always stunk. You know, it was like, you know, four minutes, five minutes. Well, but 110 I mean, minutes. But, but customer the service is going to retain a customer versus. Yeah. Well, and, you know. and that was what ultimately the supervisor told me. It's like, yeah, your talk time is really bad, but everybody loves you. And they are like, you and know, they don't cancel. she wasn't able to help me, but boy, she sure did try. Yeah. So they really couldn't like do anything. You know what's so interesting on these call lines through no matter what 800 support you're going to, how many times like the first answer you get is we can't do anything for you. And then eventually if you if you press hard enough, you'll get to their supervisor who says the same thing. Sorry, we can't do anything for you. And then you'll wait on hold for another hour and get to their supervisor and how that goes on. And eventually if you press hard enough, maybe you get somebody who can solve your problem. But it's like, why couldn't they have just solved my problem four hours ago? You know? Because they have talk time. <laughs> That's why. They have to get people yeah. on and off yeah. the call. Now, 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 the converse of that, of course, is that the the people that call up and they go, well, this thing's a piece of caca and it's not working and, you know, I want you to refund my money. And how long have you had the item? Uh, you know, year and a half, right? It's totally out of warranty. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then they then they tell you that they do this all of the time with yeah. everything they purchase. Well, you know. I remember mm. working at a makeup counter when I was in high school and shortly thereafter. And their return policy was abused. And what was bad about it was, I mean, beyond the abuse of it. So, like, somebody could come and return their makeup cream that was completely gone 
Like they used it all and they said, I don't like it. And then you have to refund their money. And that would happen a lot. And there were people who abused it and you know it and you're like, oh, this is so-and-so again. <laughs> you'd sell, you'd oh, sell, yeah. you'd sell yeah. them the, the foundation like, see you in 60 days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and it was just part she of She bought the... it one time and she's been, she's returned it every 60 days and she's never bought another thing right. of foundation, but her f- makeup is fabulous. But here's what was just, again, like poor about like metrics. And again, it pays to be, you pay a lot to be poor. Like I, I remember like if you're the, you're the clerk that's working with them. Then they, when they return that item, they didn't have the receipt for, or they used completely. You know, you're getting a charge back for that return. You at that moment, even though oh, you didn't yeah. sell it to. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. That was ter- that's terrible. That's terrible. No, that was that was retail back in the nineties. That's Everybody awful. should be forced to work retail. I know it really. They absolutely should because you would never be snotty to anybody else right. ever again in retail. And you know what? When yeah. somebody's snotty to me in mm-hmm. retail, because I I did I did go to a a little I did a little retail shopping this last holiday weekend, and there was somebody that was very snippy and snotty to me, and I was like. Why are you? I'm being very pleasant here. Like, I'm not even asking you to go help me get another size. I'm going to get it myself. Like, why are you being so snotty? I, I don't know. Yeah, who knows what they had came to the uh, came to work with. I mean, I understand. Yeah, like, know. people come and they've had their, maybe had a flat tire, all this other stuff. But that's the youth. Like, I know that if I bring my bad stuff to work, I'm not and I put that on other people, it's not going to result in anything good. Like, I just... No, but, yeah. I you mean, know, that's... that's yeah, you try you, to... You, you come at it with a maturity that... Because you you have had time and experience to, to realize that. But as you said, it's if, they, if they're young and they don't know that yet... Yeah. You know. I've always also been, like... I mean, even younger, I was, like, a people-pleaser kind of person, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like... How can I make you happy? Sure, I'll take that return. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that's awful about them charging you for it. Though. Oh, my that's God. That's awful. Well, it's a company that's no longer in business. Also <laughs> St. Louis-based, by the way. <laughs> was it uh, Famous Bar? <laughs> May Company? It was Famous Bar. Yeah. They were that, terrible. And then May Company bought them, and then Macy's bought May Company. Yeah. If I can remember how Famous that, bar was how rough. that went. That's my, that's my recollection. Of oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And Macy's also, Famous Bar also had, um, no, May Company also had Lord & Taylor, and Lord & Taylor is gone, too. Yes, it is. Well, that went, Macy's yeah. bought. Well, that went to Hudson Bay Company. Hudson Bay bought Lord, mm-hmm. Ta- Lord & Taylor? Yeah. I know. I know. It's so confusing. I know. The well, whole lineage I mean, of retail there's, here. There's so many things that are being phased out and you know like you said it probably started with pump your own gas yes it and did. then it just oh look everybody <laughs> well, and then everybody t- yeah. did that okay yeah All absolutely right. yeah oh All right. well let's what other, try this absolutely. let's take this away what other technology can we put in place yes. i mean i i read in i went down this rabbit hole about this but i read like amazon has like like a hundred robots working in their way at seriously yes they do and so they're pulling, you know, those were, that's what's pulling the warehouse stuff. You know, it's not people. Mm-hmm. And and then, of course, as I continue down the rabbit hole about, like, people's be, jobs being replaced by artificial intelligence or robots or something like that, or we do it ourselves with the checkout, um, is that the, I mean, the, the long-term domino effect of that is, I mean, let's think about our cities, right, or our, our states. Um we have an income tax, right? The state of Missouri has an income tax, so they are taxing your income. You are a worker. That's how they get their taxes. Okay, well now you're in a you used to work because you were at the Amazon warehouse and you were working, but then they replaced it with fifty percent robots. That's fifty percent less people that they are taxing for income. They should tax each individual robot, don't you think? That is what people are saying, that they should still tax those robots because... So the amount of money that they're not spending on a human being, they should still have to cough that up in taxes. I I think that's a really good point. (laughs) I also think that our educational system hasn't quite caught up with our goals for innovation and technology. You know, 
It oh, this is, is a big. This is a, that's a big thing to put out there. Emily. Whoa! Yeah, really. <laughs> well, <laughs> continue <it's>, on. <laughs> I was like, we're like, you know, three quarters, come three from? quarters into our <laughs> podcast, and Emily drops this bomb on us. <laughs> Okay, we have some wine left. We'll get through it. <laughs> Should I say it again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Education hasn't caught up with our demand for technology and innovation. You know, we are seeing more innovation every year. You know, we've had, we talked about AI, we've talked about computers, we've talked about all of this that that is that has been integrated into, you know, into our work worlds. And if you look at our education systems throughout various decades, there were there were social goals. We we had the race to the moon, right? And now all of a sudden mathematics are being taught in the public school systems that are not like like we need good math scores. We need engineers. We need and so my in fact my dad who's an engineer remembers being funneled down that path of oh you're good at math? Okay, like you need to be an engineer. You need to like go this way because we need to get to the moon, you know? <laughs> and so like we have different priorities, socially speaking, within our countries that I think shape our education rather unfortunately, rather than it being more holistic and helping to nurture our inherent skills. And so, you know, as as we focus culturally on very specific things— our education has its little little choices to make about where they're going to focus its priorities. I think that the fact that we are moving from a worker's world of having people who are skilled at um, handling of, you know, doing a running of a warehouse and, you know, various things, right? Um, skilled at working machines to pull inventory, skilled at things that robots are taking over. We need to be training and, and fostering skills within our kids that help them become greater thinkers, problem solvers, um, uh, foster talents that are beyond something that a robot can take over. I think I think everything that you said is um, is uh, uh, valid for sure. I don't think our society is even considering the fact that seventy five to eighty percent of all of the jobs are going to be eliminated in the future by AI and robots. They're, they're, we play catch up. You know, we play catch up. We we retrain people who lose their jobs to do something that they're not going to be able to do because there are people actively working right now and going, how can we create this robot, this in, a bit of artificial intelligence to do that, to do, to take, I mean, there are people that that's what they're working on. And those are the people that are going to have their jobs la- and they're going to keep their jobs the longest, but eventually they will be replaced too, because they've made such good computers that are starting to think like humans. And I'm not trying to get all Tron and <laughs> Star Wars-y. Skynet, Skynet. Skynet <laughs> or, you know, things like that. But I mean, we, we as a society and as systems that have operated on the pre-pump your gas life s- s- way of living, way of generating income, having a, having a life. We've not we've not shifted to to where we are today. We just haven't. We, you don't think we have? I think we're I shifting all the time. I don't think so. I mean, I now granted my my sphere of existence is um, outside of this podcast and limited to children. 29 years young <laughs> 20, yeah. right no um is more on the on the public service side so i that's my sphere of um experience as opposed to maybe on the innovative um uh, uh small not, or not small medium-sized businesses that sure. are you know that are on doing cutting edge things i'm not there so i'm thinking about my clientele and that's in quotes um and I don't think they're thinking, I don't think they've shifted their minds. Again, 
education system has not taught our children I'm to about, think abstractly I'm and open mindedly. I get it, <laughs> but it starts at the it starts younger. You've got to teach people how to think. I remember a huge shift in our in our education system when I was in it as a young child, and I remember it going from I'm going to teach you the answer and why it's the answer and how to think through it to nope. It's just A, B, or C, or D. It's rote. This is the answer. And I remember that distinct shift from like third grade to fourth grade. And my brother, interestingly enough, who's a few years older, recounts the same thing. It was like we used to be taught ideas and how to think around them and how to come to those conclusions. And then it just it just became like, a nope, we have to know this specific answer, not why. And, you know, in knowing the why... That helps you solve problems. Why did this battle go wrong? You know, what was the strategy in place? D- the, d- the date and who died doesn't matter. The the What was the strategy in place? What worked and didn't work? That's the thing that we can learn and grow from. And, and so I, I think the fact that we're not taught how to pivot when we're younger because we don't know how to abstractly think— because we're taught A, B, C, or D um, is well, a problem. Well, I hear you. I hear you. I, I think This though, is my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I think, though, that what we're facing doesn't— the shift needs to occur across all ages and levels um, within our society. We can't just say— or, or limit it to like, well, well, we'll shift how we how we teach the kids. We have to start talking well, about yeah. this stuff at, with adults, with decision makers, with um, uh, mayors, with state reps, state legislatures. I mean, because true. because the traditional sources of taxing a person's income, um, taxing somebody's property that they pay for with the income as as people lose their jobs because they've been replaced yeah and it's i mean it's and it's and it's a slow it's a slow thing but i think uh slow but it's inc- the rate of change is increasing as opposed to when we first lost our gas station attendants mm-hmm. then we you know, maybe within ten years, we lost the uh, the phone, the phone, the live person on well, the it's phone. Kind of like tax increment financing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Seriously, where you know you have this community that does it because this is a great idea. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. wow, this is great. You know, we're going to get all these businesses in here. Well, what happens? Those businesses leave from the place next door. Yeah. So now the guy next door, the community next door, well, they offer their own to get the other folks that are coming from the one next to them. Right. Where does it end? And it doesn't. And so this this big circle right. and and nobody benefits because the only beneficiaries of this are those companies taking advantages of TIFFs because yes. they get to or taking hey, advantage of the of the robotics or taking whatever, advantage right. absolutely whatever. they're yeah. they're going they're hop skipping and jumping from one community to the next yeah. because they're getting these incentives to do so. Well, I think those who are leading a lot of these decisions too, like the, that we're talking about, they're not feeling the pain. Oh, they don't feel the pain. Right. They and don't so, feel the pain. So 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 they're not going to be encouraged to make any shifts and changes. You're absolutely re- Absolutely right, Michelle. Like, there needs to be an— She did say that. She said, I was absolutely course. right. Did we all notice that? Write of it course. down. Of course. <laughs> that, that, you know, it needs to go beyond our education system. But, you know, there are powers that are leading a lot of these decisions that don't— it, as long yeah. as it— I, I think that what we can do, though, is educate ourselves, be aware. On occasion, Emily— mm-hmm. Go to the lady or the man at the checkout and mm. let them take care of your your groceries. Yeah. Help them stay employed. You know? Um, it's kind of like, you okay. know, they don't have gas reader, meter readers anymore either. They don't. They automated that. Meter. Of course they did. How did they do that? Oh, they came and they installed this remote reading device <laughs> in my house. You know? I mean, it's like, really? Every time you turn around, it's pump your own gas. I am not kidding you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now I have to say that I was glad when we got to pay at the pump. Oh, 
but now that I say that, so so hypocritical because that eliminated somebody's job, right? But it was like pay at the pump because I I had like a minivan full of kids and leaving those children to go inside. Right. There's always it's a, like a sanctuary moment. It was for all, you? It was like oh, I don't have to leave. Okay, I can just swipe here. The, you know, but it also it like it, it eliminates somebody's job. I mean, it's like how it's a conundrum, isn't it? It really it is. is. It is because if you only have one item, it's way faster for you to do your. Assuming that there's nobody, you know. At, at the self-checkout. It's way faster for you to do your it own. It is. At least, at least we think it is. I'm not sure that it actually is. I think if you... be nice to do some case studies If you go into a checkout that. lane with a person there and you check out versus you go to your own, I mean... It's probably exactly the same length of time. I don't know. I doubt well, that it's and really if you're buying faster. wine, you have to get the attendant to look at you, and she's going to ID me for sure because <laughs> I look so close to 21. And then I'm going to have to pull my ID out. And, and that then, takes time. That takes time. It does. But when I go to the checkout lady. You're much closer. Who knows me? <laughs> They're much closer <laughs> oh, to you. And they girl, go, oh, I, yeah. I know you're over 21. <laughs> That's not even a question. <laughs> <laughs> By a couple of years. You're looking good, though. Keep it up, you know. You're buying this? That's a good brand. Oh, but this is expired. Are you sure you still want this? <laughs> Hell no, I don't want that. How the fuck did I miss that? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if, like, right now, like, everybody's in their mask when they go to the stores, which which makes things, like, I'm getting carded way more, you know? <laughs> and because of the whole mask because thing. Because the lines are hidden there, behind they are. the mask. But, like, you know, like, you just see people with the face shields. Wouldn't it be amazing if, like, like, they actually like gave you kind of a fuzzy screen, <laughs> a filter, <laughs> a Snapchat right. filter. Yes. That'd be good. That's probably the they next beauty face. Yeah, that probably that's probably next. They I'm should sure. do beauty face screens. You know, Unfil- where you uh, have the a mask, shield. Uh, the, oh, shield? the face shield would be beauty face. I love so, it. Yes. <laughs> No makeup needed. Just put the shield on. What a wonderful life. I'm sure somebody's already thinking of that, and it's going to be on. All right. If you're thinking of that and you invent that, we want some of that. We just, just, we you just, just need want to send it to I've us. already we put it out there, you yeah. know, like, you know, yeah. Well, there's just a lot. There's a lot to think about, and I know that, like, you know, during our COVID times of 2020, you know, it shifted the way people bought things, the way people, you know, even the, the you know, Instacart where people are, they're delivering your groceries again, you know, as opposed, I mean, there's grocery stores that had delivery boys, right? They did. So it's kind of like there are some of those, well, until they figure out how to get somebody to remotely. A drone. A drone or autonomous cars, yes. right? Yep. Self-driving cars. Indeed. Drones oh, and self-driving. Yeah. So the drone... The drone will go ahead of the self-driving car to provide the visual for the self-driving car. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'll have they'll have like mm. um, conveyor belts. So yeah. so the stuff will be stacked inside of the vehicle in the order of delivery. Well, Amazing. by the very very smart robot, by the robot because that's loaded it. Sure. Because a person would make a mistake big time, and they you would know. give you like door you dings. Know, the, yeah. <laughs> They'd give you, like, the cherry tomatoes, and you wanted the Roma tomatoes. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but as long as everything's barcoded correctly and entered into their system, yeah, you're going to be okay. Yes. Yeah, I just, yeah. I, I really uh, That think... was another innovation, by the way, because I worked in the grocery store for a period of time. Did you so... come oh. up with that? No, Kathy? that was not me. That and trash Damn district. Damn it, Dale. No. <laughs> no, but that was, that was the first sort of innovation were, were the barcodes. Barcodes. The barcodes. And, that, oh. and groceries. You know, grocery stores, especially in this town, are incredibly innovative. They are so happy to suck up new new ideas and new technology, truly. We're wow. way at this. St. Louis is really this hotbed of innovation. It's really strange, and people don't realize that. We're being experimented on, and um, we didn't even realize perhaps, it. Perhaps, perhaps. Well, you it's, know those handy-dandy little cards that were you're like, Oh, these are your. This is how you accrue points. And every time you yeah. buy here, we're the see. Rewards. There yeah. used to be that eagle was, stamps. Okay, oh, there used yeah. to be green but, stamps and eagle stamps. But that's their way of like learning consumer behavior. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And we're all fine with it because we get two dollars off every now and then. $2, I'm going to tell you like every everything visit. about myself from groceries. <laughs> but man. It's worth two dollars. Yeah, <laughs> right. They must have known. Kind of crazy. They must have known that it was a bunch of women they were going to be talking to because we always undervalue ourselves. <laughs> like, if it had oh been men, God. they'd be like, two, "I need four dollars." I could save two dollars. <laughs> okay, I'm signing up. Just I'm going right to give now. you my home number, my email, my address. 
you have my debit card number associated with this account of what as well. Exactly. Fantastic. You know when my period is. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, actually, right. there's a message that comes up on the screen. It's like, Emily, don't you think you should buy the super it's, tampons? It's, it's time <laughs> this for is, the, This right. is the month that you're on the super tampons, yes. not the, not the light the, flow. This is the heavy month one. You're buying the wrong pack. <laughs> well, you do know the state of Missouri was doing that, weren't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, like following people's menstrual period. Yeah, yes. I heard about that. That's a different <laughs> podcast episode. We cannot go down that that okay. rabbit hole with right. our listeners tonight. Yeah, we we will have you back. We can talk about that for sure. We can talk about <laughs> robots, rabbit holes on, <laughs> on it, you know, government, local government breaching personal security. I don't know. Personal, the, the, yeah. the, the state monitoring <laughs> yeah. your menstrual period. Yes. Yeah, that's that was absolutely... Um, for anybody who wants to look it up until we have that episode... It's true. Yeah. It's true. Just it is Google's, true. Uh, Scary, but true. Missouri yeah. Department of Health uh, monitoring uh, the women who went to the Planned Randall Parenthood. Williams, I believe, is the gentleman's name. Is that, He's uh, still there, isn't he? That He is the guy with mm-hmm. the bow tie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucker. Um, yeah, he's the guy. Yeah, why... Oh, Missouri has this so is, much to apologize for it, to the yeah. rest of the entire world. And it's yeah. still happening, right? Yeah, it's still happening. Yeah, so I I, I, yeah. I, thought we should all just go ahead and send our used tampons and pads <laughs> to him. If he wants to monitor it, he should have yes, them. Yes, I agree. Oh, I mean, because God. you can't flush them anyway, right? That's because right. we have right. old pipes. So let's just send them to the health director. Yes. Oh, my God. I think I've just amazing. really um, <laughs> I've inspired all of our listeners. Feel free. Go ahead. Send it all across the world. Send your used tampons and pads to the Missouri Department of Health Director, whatever oh. his name is with the bow tie, and tell him tell him all the details of that <laughs> period. Right. Tell him about the flow. When it started. When the, it stopped. The, right, right. The cramping level, yeah. like mm-hmm. how many Midol you had to take or Whether not. Whether some escaped from the tampon. You know, yeah. yeah. All kinds of if things. you had any leakage issues, yeah, you know, anything like that. How many stained bed sheets that you had to then yeah. sheet uh, or to, to pants, wash? Or, 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 under, or panties. panties. How yes. many bottles of wine you went through? <laughs> how many clearly speaking podcast mm-hmm. episodes that you listened to to help you get through your right. time of the month? Yeah, send all that to him <laughs> with a big old love you so much. Thank you for caring. Thank you for what? Thank you for being so concerned about my body. And then you could like enclose a mask so he wears a mask. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. We're gonna have to wrap this up because I, know, I mean it's just I gonna go darker it, from it's here. Gonna get, it's, gonna, it's gonna get worse. We're gonna get ugly and nasty. We'll probably start cursing. <laughs> Things like that. But, Kathy, it's been absolutely a joy having you well, on the show so yeah. today. It's been fun. <laughs> it has been fun. <laughs> but, but we're not going to let you stay forever. We're going to, okay, we good. are, Kick there's a, there's a finite Kick time. So, good, um, yeah. So, listeners, we'll be back next week. And thanks so much for uh, uh, always being there and, and supporting us. Um, visit our website. Follow us on all of our socials. That's right. Call us. Tell us what you think about today's episode at 812 727 0794. Nice job on remembering that, Michelle. It might be wrong. <laughs> well, I'll, it's on our website. I'll put the right one in the show so notes. So go find <laughs> it. Anyway, it was Thank great. Thank you. We love you. Cheers. Cheers.